I'm going to give a demo of how I process the videos for Code Refinery. This is the Python for Scientific Computing course, actually. Here I am in the streaming machine. I will change to the place. I will copy or copy. Uh, oh. oh nine. So that's today. I copy it to the raw raw day three dot dash OBS dot MKV. And then if I do get status, it shows the new file. I will get annex add the raw file. It takes a minute while it's checksumming it. And now it's committed. I can do git annex sync dot content. And this automatically makes the commit. So I don't need to do any more. So from the other systems it's connected to, which is um, the our cluster Triton, it knows it should automatically copy the day three OBS file to Triton. And now it's distributing this information around. Now I can do git status. It's clean. If I do a list of the raw data, we see it's a symlink, and that's how I know that it, it is in Git. So I will log out. I will SSH to the cluster. Uh, scratch. Video processing. Here I will also do a Git Sync content. Ah. Of course, I have to module load git annex first. Git annex sync content. It says, ah. Um, okay. And if I here. So now the raw video is on the cluster. So from here, I have a make file, which can make the new subtitles. I think I need to module load whisper first, and then I can do make SRT. And it started processing. So yes, I see it's doing the day three video. So now I will pause the recording and come back when it's done. Okay, so now it's done transcribing with Whisper. It was actually pretty fast. The time just seems slow since I went and did other stuff in the meantime. If we do get status, we see there's this new thing. I can get and next add this, the SRT file. Actually, first I will do something. Uh, first I will edit this and I'll remove some of the basic names from it to make it more uh, private. Okay, I just did some minor edits here. I will do git annex add raw day three obs dot srt. I had to log out and log in again because my network changed. So we add it with git annex. Notice it says it's not a large file. It's adding the content to the git repository. That's because of this. Get attributes file, which is defining which count as large files. So large files, despite the name, doesn't.
that doesn't just mean large, but it means that it is going to be added to the annex instead of git itself. So with that being said, we can do a normal git commit. Uh, add subtitles to A3 and a git push. Git annex sync dash dash content would work just as well. So with that being said, let's come to my own computer. First, first though, let's look and see what we see on GitHub. So this is the repository. It is code refinery slash video processing. If we look at the code, we can see the stuff. We go to this course, we go to the raw videos, and we see the day three raw video is there. If we click on it, we see it is just a sim link that's broken. So git annex distributes the data separately. So just because this is a GitHub, the actual raw video is not available to anyone unless you have that extra access. And the subtitle file is, well, it's like you expect from a subtitle file. So now here I am on my own laptop computer. I will use a program called Subtitle Editor on the uh, mm, ah, so it's not on my computer yet. So what do I need to do? Let's do a git pool. I could also do git annex sync dash dash content. Uh, so subtitle editor has started. And oh, what do you know? There's no preview. So I want that. So we can close this for now. And let's do a git annex git and Francis Com 23, raw day three, obs.mkv. And we wait a second. So this being my laptop, it's linked to our cluster as a way of distributing the files. So it goes there directly, gets it, and downloads it. I guess I could have shown how the this file, this link, was a broken symbolic link before I did this. And after that, it will be a non-broken symbolic link. So let's run subtitle editor again. And what do you know? We have the preview. So since most of this is going to be taken, I will open it up and basically scroll through. I really quickly read things and I see what needs to be adjusted. I'm not even bothering reading everything right now. Um, I'll do really minor fix ups. This is actually more minor than I would normally do, but yeah. Like you see, I'm just really scrolling through here quickly. I mean, if it's normal text, it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect. So I will focus on things like where the commands are. Um, yeah, OK, I'm going to scroll through and find a technical episode. So I see like here, this is Control Shift V. That's readable. Control V might do something. This is all fine. Let's find where there is some file names. 
Uh, look, and this says arc parse, but I know that should be arc parse. So this is probably happening a lot. So I will do a find. And let's do some replacements. Replace, replace, replace. OK, good. And now I might have lost where my place was in the file, so maybe that wasn't worth it. OK, this didn't get it. Mm. OK, let's scroll on down. Let's find an example with. Mm. OK, CMS, I wonder what that is. I have a shortcut. OK, I can't figure out what that's supposed to be. But I, I bound the plus key, where if I push plus, it will play the video file at the location for the subtitle. I'll come back and look at this later, since I'm just demonstrating it for you. So things that are often wrong are like the Unix command names or dashes, things like that, or names of different modules and so on. So yeah. Anyway, I guess I get, you get the idea. I'm going to pause the video and we will return at the next part. OK, so the other part that we can do in parallel is the cutting. So I will open this file, Python. So this YAML file defines some basic stuff about the workshop here, a workshop description. OK, let's make that more readable. OK, workshop description, stuff like that, the input files. And then for each input file, an output to be generated from it, title and description, and the edit list. So we see start at this time and end at this time. And next for the intro, we see similar. Output, title, description, edit list. Here we have times of points in the videos from the original. These are. These will become table of contents entries mapped into the time range from well, relative to the start time. If we go down, we see some of them have breaks in the middle. So I will scroll on down to day three. So using Emacs, I will, I will uncomment the first part. I will verify, yeah, this looks the same. Now I'm trying to call it day 3.1. Actually, we want an intro. So because we had an interesting icebreaker discussion today. So I will copy this icebreaker from day one and bring it down and insert it in day three. Uh, day 3.1 icebreaker, 3.1. So there I gave a little description. I'll probably modify it a bit more after I stop. And then we've got the start and end points. So I remove these. I will make a new terminal here, MPV on um, mm, I will come here. So MPV with HR seek, it allows me to seek more precisely in there and not just to the keyframes. HR seek Python for SkiCom 23 raw day three OVS.mkv. 
So this starts up. I will make it a bit smaller. Um, and I can use the arrow keys to quickly scroll through. Oh, let's display the timestamps. And here we go. And notice it has the subtitles on here. So I can use that. So I'll find the beginning. It will play. I can increase the speed some. Okay, you can't hear what video is going on, but I can. So, okay, this seems like a good starting point. So here, I have a key binding so I can copy the start time and I paste it there. I keep scrolling. Okay, that's too far. Okay. Here, this is where I want to start. So here. And there I've processed icebreaker. So for scripts, this is incremented to day 3.2 now. I'll read and make sure this is basically the same. Yeah, seems okay. Scripts, and here we go. And these pretty well exam or match up with the, or with what we did, the sections of the lesson. So I get the start and end times and I would insert these timestamps. And with that, I will see you later once this is done. Here is an example of a fully done lesson scripts input output and all of these times are now placed here okay so I'm not done with everything yet but I'm close enough I will start the encoding so I will minimize this git status shows that the uh, the file has been modified I will git add it I will git commit it. Uh, give it some message. And I will git annex saying content. OK. And while that's going, I will open another terminal and I will connect my home computer. So the reason I'm using my home computer is that the FFmpeg I saw on the cluster didn't work very well. And um, yeah, that didn't work very well somehow. And my laptop's not powerful enough. My home computer definitely is. So notice here, this git annex sync dot content is already copying the raw day three to my home computer named Ramanujan. So I will CD video processing. I will wait for that to be done. I will Get annex sync content. And it's pushing and pulling from all the origins it knows of. So from GitHub and from the cluster. Python for ski comp uh, 2023. And what do you know? So the raw day three OBS is already 
on here. So what do I do now? I will do tail or grab. Wait, I have a virtual environment that I will activate. Mm. Uh, no, so that virtual environment isn't here. FFmpeg is just installed. So I will grab, I will find FFmpeg from the bash history. I will copy it. So what's it? It's FFmpeg edit list, which is the program that does the cutting. This is the input YAML file. This is the input directory that has the video files. And dash O out means save to the out directory. Reencode means do actual reencoding. Eight cores. And then I will limit it to day three. And let's add a list to it. So this is what will be encoded now. So let's do it. May as well run time there. So there it goes. I will be back later when it's done, but in the meantime, I will keep processing the day three edit list with the last sessions. Okay, so now I'm done with processing the last video. I will minimize, get status as usual, I will add it, commit. Okay, let's get push it. And the encoding is still going on. I see it's on lesson three now. And I will go back to subtitle editing. Mm, yeah. So I will open this up and basically start at the top and systematically go through and scan through every line. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I'm still processing subtitles, but I just saw that the last, the encoding is done. So let's sync. Uh, I had already synced the new FFmpeg edit list there. Let's, I mean, I've already committed the new edit list. Git pull. So this went up to dependencies. Oh, and it took 38 real minutes, and this is very high quality encoding. So doing the list, we see that these two lessons are left. So I tell it I want to re-encode these last two parts of last two sessions of day five with the dash L option. Okay, it's going. I will be back when it is done. Okay, the subtitle processing is done. I will add it all to Git, add all those changes. And let's push for good measure. So this, the last two lessons of the video are still processing, but while that's going on, let's do one more thing here. Uh, I will activate a virtual environment, change to here. Uh,
Okay, here we go. So I will run one of these commands. So this is ffmpeg edit list, python frisky comp the yaml file, this directory given out file. Uh, the dash c means check, which means it doesn't actually encode in any videos, but it does recreate the info and subtitle files, and that's what we'll see. And we want to do it for day three with the dash L option, and we want to make subtitles. So I run this. And note that all of this can happen even when the videos are not yet processed. If we see git status, we see all of these day three things done. So if we see now there's an info.txt file for every video, and this is what can be uploaded as the YouTube description. So it has the, the video title, the workshop title, the video description, and then the generic workshop description, which is at the bottom. And the subtitle file is, well, the subtitles. So it uses, it used the raw subtitle file. Uh, it used this raw subtitle file in extracting just the segment corresponding to that part. So with, with that being said, let's pause again and wait for the video processing to be done. Actually, I realized we can parallelize even more because some of these videos are done. So let's begin processing those already. Let's see, I will connect to my home computer again. here. So I can get annex add. So I will add all of the process video files, but not all the info.txt files because those are done on my computer already. I could do git add instead of git annex add, and it would still know that they are large files that should be annexed instead of git committed. Okay, um, I hope git annex sync.content will not add new files. Yeah, so these files have been created and it's copying to the cluster. Okay, with a brief pause in the recording, it is done. Okay, let's move this out of the way and come back to this computer. So I may as well get add all the stuff in out now. It won't conflict with anything. I'll get annex sync.content, it pushes and pulls. It does a lot of syncing. If I list out, we see that the day three files are still broken links. And that's because git annex hasn't pulled them yet because git, because the git, anted, git annex wanted content for this computer is just present. So that means it won't pull in stuff that's not requested. Uh, uh, get annex get out. 
and it comes quickly because this is on the same network as the cluster. Notice how as I'm using git annex here, I'm not even really thinking about where stuff should be moved and where it should go. This is all defined in terms of these wanted content expressions. So basically a git annex sync dash dash content and then git annex git when necessary moves everything exactly where I want it to be. So now I'm ready to start YouTube uploading. Okay, so here I am in YouTube. I push create, upload videos. If I come to this out directory, we see we can start with the MKV for icebreaker, upload. I come here. I use less on I get the .info.txt file I copy this uh, it's going crazy I just the browser with some I paste the first line is the title, and this is something which someone could automate someday. I select the playlist. Most of the rest of these options have all been set in YouTube, the channel defaults somewhere. I set the recording date as today. Like I said, everything else is good for defaults. I add subtitles. I upload file with timing. I find 3.1 icebreaker subtitles .srt, and I will play a little bit. And I'm just making sure that the transition is right. Yeah, it's good. Um, you didn't hear the audio of the video, but that's fine. I click done. And then I do next. It's checking and next, and then push publish. And so that the videos appear, oh, is it done? Yeah, it's done. So sometimes whenever this is going, it takes a while for the processing and the checking to be done, in which case I wait for that to finish before I start uploading the next video. And that's just to make sure that it gets uploaded and stays in the correct order, like reverse chronological order. Sometimes if I start uploading the next one, but the next one finishes before the previous one, then the videos will be in a wrong order. Okay, with that being said, the encoding here is done. So git annex out Let's add the remaining MKV files. Let's sync it, which includes copying to the cluster. Okay, since I paused, that was pretty fast. There's one other thing we can do. So I can mm, get annex copy out the, the output uh, video files to uh, loss. And I think it happens from this computer. Mm, 
but I would have thought these were all already there. I wonder why it's copying again. Anyway, this is putting them on the CSC object storage, and then other people can pull them. Okay, it's done copying to Alice, and I realize what happened. So these it said it's copying, but really was already there. So it's only copying the new things. And we could use git annex preferred content expressions, so it would automatically copy stuff to there. Okay, um, let's see. So now that I'm here, or let's see, git status. So I had it clean the text files there. I will tell it to sync content and down here on my laptop. And with the said, uh, so here I'm going to get the these two last video files, but I'm going to tell say when to get it from Atlas. And here I haven't authenticated to the Atlas object storage, so it's getting it from the public copy. E there. So it's downloading via HTTP, doing checksums and all that stuff. It looks different and that's because it's using the data lake. Okay, so I will basically go and continue uploading the things to YouTube and maybe that's all. With this, I've processed all the videos with not that much effort overall. So what have, so now it's all done and uploaded and configured. It is now a little bit less than four hours after the course is done. And three hours, well, three hours of course videos are uploaded, which is probably about two hours of actual content. So what did we learn and do here? So the video came and I used git and git annex to distribute it around. I used plain text files to configure the editing and distribute it around, or which, which would allow git to share that data and also multiple people to work in it and to edit and work at the same time. So the encoding the subtitle fixing and the editing could all be happening at the same time. Well, encoding after each part was already edited. Um, and a lot of this could be automated. So I could improve the make file some more. So that way it is Mm. So even more is automatic. Right now there's a fair amount that still isn't. So I think this is, well, the system has promise. It's not perfect because there's a lot of manual stuff to do still, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's the main it allows us to publish these videos far faster and with less work than almost any other courses or workshops I've seen. Thanks and bye.